Rub up your engines! Today I'm going to talk about how you can save money by telling you when things in your car should be replaced as pairs or sets and when you don't need to waste your money and buy a whole set. Because we all know today people are trying to sell you stuff. Sometimes, hey, you really need to replace things in pairs or sets, but sometimes it's a complete waste of money. Now we'll start with brake pads. In this case, tiny little brake pads. They go on my Triumph motorcycle. Not a case of brake pads. You do want to replace them in pairs. If your right front runs out, you want to change the right front and the left front brake pads. Anyways, that's how they sell them. You get a set. You get four of them. Two for the right and two for the left. And you want to change them in pairs. Hey, my motorcycle only has one wheel on the front, so <laughs> there's only two of them. There isn't a set of four. And you want to change them in pairs because you want the car to brake evenly. And you don't want one side to be worn more than the other anyway. So if the front ones are gone, you replace both front ones. And if the back ones are gone, you replace both back ones. So it breaks evenly. You have the same material on each one and it'll be safer. Realize that brake pads are made of all kinds of different materials. You don't want to have one type of material on one side and one on the other. Now let's say you have a bad brake caliper. The assembly that squeezes your brakes in. This can be a slightly different story. Over the years, a lot of places to say, ah, oh, you got to replace them in pairs, spend all this money because they're a lot more expensive than brake pads. It's not going to work right, but realize that they won't naturally wear exactly the same. Take an instance that normally your right front tire hits more potholes than the left because you're sitting closer to the left wheel. You see a pothole, you're going to miss it, but if it's on a right wheel, you might not see it and you'll hit it. You can damage the right front caliper a lot faster than you can the left. So you might have a perfectly good left caliper, but the right one's bad. So let's say you jack the carpenter. You see the right front brake caliper is leaking, but the left one's perfectly clean. There's nothing wrong with just changing the right front caliper. Or conversely, say the right front caliper, when you jack it up, you try spinning the wheel and it's just locking up, but the left one spins freely. You could replace just the right one and then see what happens. Because if you do that and it breaks perfectly fine, eh, there's nothing wrong with doing that. How brake calipers work, they're pretty simple. Little rubber seals, a cup, usually made out of stainless steel. Sometimes they make them cheaper, but they used to make them out of stainless steel. And when you step on the brakes, the brake pressure pushes that cup, which then squeezes the brake pads. The only thing that really wears on them is if the seals go bad and they either lock up or the seals go so bad the fluid leaks out and you got to replace them. So if you got one that's working perfectly fine on the other side, you don't necessarily have to change them in pairs. Now, of course, you have to be logical with your decision, too. Let's say you got a really old car, you live up north, and both of the calipers are rusted like mad. You might as well as buy two rebuilt ones. And in this case, there's nothing wrong with buying rebuilt brake calipers. Basically all it is, is a piston inside a container and when the pressure is pushed inside it when you step on the brake master cylinder, the fluid pushes that piston to squeeze the calipers. They're very simple devices. So there's nothing wrong with buying good remanufactured ones. They're a relatively simple device. It's not like you're rebuilding a computer with all these circuits. It's a pretty simple physical thing. So getting good rebuilt calipers, there's no problem with buying them. You don't necessarily have to buy new ones, which can sometimes cost five to ten times as much as a rebuilt one. Struts. This is McPherson struts. Do you need to change them in pairs, all four? How can you change them? Now they absorb shocks, part of the suspension system for handling and cornering or for a smooth ride. It's best to replace them in pairs. Each piston has gone up and down about the same amount of times. If one is worn out, the next one is probably soon to go out. A lot of guys, they're not going to use the factory struts because they charge too much money for them. So they won't use the dealer struts. They'll use aftermarket. And there's plenty good aftermarket ones out there. Generally, they're not going to be exactly the same configuration as the original equipment ones. So they're not going to ride exactly the same, corner exactly the same. So in this case, you need to change them in pairs. The right front one's out, best to change the right and the left front. If the back one's worn out, best to change them in pairs. So it corners good, doesn't swerve around. Let's say you're driving an old junker. One strut is all worn out and all the hydraulic fluid inside is leaked all over. It's covered in oil. And that one side bounces like mad, but the other side doesn't. You can just replace that one side and then drive it around. If it rides a whole bunch better and doesn't bounce, you're not wasting any money. 
If it still rides bad, you can change the other side. And a lot of guys with old junkers, if one side completely collapsed, they'll just change the one side and they'll say, heck, I'll just drive it and see how it goes. And then if they see the other side starts leaking like mad, then they'll replace that later. Headlight bulbs. Now I changed these in pairs because it's a new LED setup. Watch this. With a flip of the switch, now you have great warning lights. And of course, if you want to have headlights and warning lights, ah, just put on the high beams and you'll have all kinds of warning systems going on. Now of course, if you're in a pinch at night, when your headlight burns out, quick go to a store, buy another bulb and put it in. Ah, there's nothing wrong with doing that, but here's something I've seen over the years that sometimes surprises people, but change the headlight bulb on one side and then a month or two later, the other side burned out. Is there something wrong with my car that's burning these bulbs out all the time? If you change one headlight bulb, and it's new and the old one isn't. A little bit of extra power that a new one takes can strain the old one and it will quickly burn out. So if you're the type of person that doesn't want to have your car messed with all the time, if one headlight burns out, change both bulbs. That makes the most sense. It's best to have both bulbs using the same amount of electricity set up exactly the same with the same brand bulb so they work together correctly rather than having an old one of one type a new one of another type you want to get two new ones that are exactly the same and install them at the same time then you won't have to think about it most cars it's very easy to change the bulbs a lot of auto parts stores that sell them they'll install them free on most cars you're best to do that because if you put in one and the other one burns out and you think something's wrong with your car and you go to a mechanic who's not totally honest he's going to say oh i can tell him he's got an electrical short and then charge him a bunch of money and just change the two bulbs and charge him labor for hours of stuff that i didn't even do i have seen that happen to a lot of people so if it's something simple like a headlight bulb that you can easily do yourself change them in pairs now if you own one of those fancy european cars that has those high intensity some of the bulbs are like 160 bucks up per bulb you really have to change those in pairs the way they run if you change one burn one out i guarantee you in a few weeks or months the other side's going to burn out you might as well as change them both at once even though those are super expensive you can go to any auto parts store and get a halogen bulb that's stocking a lot of cars for like 10 bucks they don't cost anything the hid bulbs you really got to change those in pairs and let's face it if you bought a european car to save money you bought the wrong car in the first place fuel injectors crucial to the heart of your engine this one has four fuel injectors they spray just the right amount of gas in your engine controlled by a computer now of course as they wear their flow properties start to change but generally they wear pretty evenly all four at the same time these babies have 239,000 miles on them. they're all original shows you Toyota makes some good stuff but if a fuel injector ever went bad on this thing if I wanted it to run correctly I would replace all four injectors because you can't have one brand new injector that has the perfect spray and three worn ones. It will not work correctly. And on really modern cars, you got to buy the right injectors, of course, but you even have to run a computer program to make the injectors work with the computer system and all the sensors on the car. It has to be run over with a computer to set them all up. You can't just pop the old ones out and pop new ones in and drive away. It will not run correctly. But if you got one of those real high-end cars, a V12 Audi. I watched the guy replace an injector once. It was like a 20-something hour job. It was insanity the way he worked on the car. And the stuff costs so much money. Guys will replace one or two if they're bad. And then they can use the computer to reprogram the whole system. So that at least it'll run correctly. It'll be able to calibrate that injector to work the same as the other injector. That's the advantage of buying a good car like a Toyota. Rarely do the injectors break. And if you got a four-cylinder one, it's only got four injectors. So what the heck, replace them all in one fell swoop. And if you don't want to buy the expensive brand new injectors, what you want is to buy a set of calibrated injectors. So you make sure that the rebuilt injectors have been calibrated. There are places that rebuild them and do a decent job, but you gotta buy a recalibrated set. Or if you had a really old car like this, heck, you could go to a junkyard and buy four of them off the same engine. <laughs> They'd all be pretty much the same, you know? You could buy four of them off the engine. I mean, this has got 239 on it and they're still working. So you could try used ones if you were in a gambling mood. Just get them off the same engine. Spark plugs inside here, just like the fuel injectors you really want to change all of them at the same time you got four cylinder you change all four matching set 
so everything works perfectly. Because I've had customers in the past, they'll have a code like misfire cylinder number three. They'll just change the number three spark plug. And then later they come back and say, well now it's misfiring on cylinder number two. You change all of them at once. Because if you change one and it's brand new, of course it's gonna work the best. Then the other ones might not work quite as well and they'll start misfiring on the other cylinder. Spark plugs don't cost that much money. Replace them in sets. Fan belts, or to be politically correct today, drive belts. If you got more than one, this one has one, two, three fan belts on it. And they have a lot of mileage on them, or they're a lot old and cracked. Change the whole side of them. It only makes sense. If they're all old and worn out, any of them go at any time. So just change them all at one time. Then you don't have to think about it for years. Many modern cars only have one gigantic serpentine belt. So you can only change them all at once because there's only one. <laughs> And in that respect, since you only have one fan belt that runs absolutely everything, and the cars are virtually undrivable if that belt breaks, look at it every once in a while. You see a bunch of cracks on it, change it now, and then you don't have to think about it for years and years and years. Or if it starts squealing first thing in the morning, realize that most modern cars, not only do they have one fan belt, but they have an automatic tensioner. You never have to adjust it, they adjust themselves. So, if you have one of those cars, and it squeals first thing in the morning, generally means you need a new belt. Replace the belt because you don't want it breaking when you're driving on the road somewhere. And if they are squealing, it means they're worn. These modern belts are different than the old ones. The modern belts have all those grooves. And as strange as it sounds, as they wear, the grooves actually get deeper. Then they don't ride on the spools very well. Like your alternator's got a bunch of grooves in it and the belt fits in there. And as it wears, the holes in the belt get deeper and then it doesn't sit right. It doesn't sit perfectly. It sits only on the edge of the belt and that's why the belt makes noise. And that's why you'd want to change the belt when it's making noise. It's telling you it's worn. It's actually giving you a warning ahead of time. So now you know things on your car that you should change in pairs or sets and things that you really don't have to. So you won't waste money on unneeded repairs, but you will fix your car correctly over the long run. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.